Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to talk about repurposed bow ties today with Paul Hunter. So I want to brag about you just oh, a little man. bit. You're an innovator, an entrepreneur. You're a junior in college at Regis University out in Denver. Um, how did you come up with this idea? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a crazy thing to take off, you know. Um, I started making these out of military uniforms a while back, like two years ago. And that's all I did was made them out of military uniforms as a memorabilia piece for fallen soldiers. Um, you know, people make different things out of fallen soldier military uniforms, and I thought bow ties were a really cool representation of that. So let's talk about that, because you're a big give-back guy. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted to help fallen soldiers. So how did you start into doing that? day one yeah day one it was actually night one I was it was on the <laughs> coffee table of my living room you know it was basically I got it was 1 30 in the morning and I had watched a news special on some military uniform um, like transitional piece and so I actually felt this passion that night at 1 30 and I drove to a 24-hour Walmart and bought my very first sewing machine and um, made the first repurposed bow tie that night how did you know how to sew? You just I, <laughs> watched a YouTube video? Yeah, basically. I watched a two and a half minute YouTube video probably 12 times, just back and forth on how to make a bow tie. Um, and it took quite a few iterations, yeah. Did you give some of these bow ties to families? Yeah, how definitely. Did, how, tell me about that. It was really cool, um, and I think this is where my passion sort of like cultivated itself was in doing this. I saw um, this sort of connection that happened, you know, and being able to remember somebody who has fallen in a different way and in a way that the family felt represented them, you know, and there's just something so cool about that that when they see this representation of them, there's a connection there that they probably had before they passed. And it's just, you, you can't experience anything like that. Yeah. How did you go from that to making these? And where do you get your materials? So uh, I had a shirt in my closet that I had burnt on the stove and just kind of, I was like, well, I know how to make them now and I could donate this shirt to ARC where it won't be sold or I could make a bow tie out of it. So I did that and I started wearing it around and um, people started asking me where I got it. And instead of saying, you know, a department store or something like that, I told them the story. And this is really when I saw that people were interested in the story behind the fabric and what it was before. And, um, and then it just kind of reached my passion for the environment and stuff like that and so now we source all of our materials and it's all potentially wasted fabric so it's on its way to the landfill and we intercept it before it goes to the landfill so it's not wasted and so it doesn't end up there what kind of material so you use cottons do you use upholstery fabric yep. uh, all of that anything yeah we do uh, I mean we even have denim bow ties corduroy bow ties non-traditional stuff that you won't find anywhere else yep. now you're a guy that really understands some hard times in life. How did you get here from there? You used yeah. to live in your car. Yeah, it was, I mean, and the bigger story there is like everybody has these times of their life where they are just down and out, you know, and it's more so focusing on the positive, you know, and taking any sort of hardship that you may have and turning it into a positive. You know, I took um, any of my difficulties from my past and turned them into, I want to help people in similar positions. Um, and I think that that's so important. Did your professors at Regis University see something very special in you? <laughs> and how much did they guide you? Gosh, that's such a hard question. It's like, um, or did you have to say, hey, <laughs> I'm special. I know how to do this. No, I don't know. This, um, in a way, some of this is kind of second nature to me. For some reason, you know, I just... I just am kind of doing doing my own thing, you know, and um, people are liking it. So that's kind of the weird thing is like to watch something that was just going to be a hobby take off in the way that it has, has been, I just, I can't even put a word to it. Yeah. You've been in business about two years. Mm -hmm. You think you've sold just about a thousand bow ties. Yeah. Um, where do you plan to take this company or do you know? Because people are asking you yeah. about ties as yeah. well. People are asking about ties. Um, we've had people ask about pocket squares and shirts and larger things. So um, we actually just got done pitching at an innovation challenge with Regis, um, asking for a grant to expand our business into other wearables. Um, so we want to take our socially conscious mission for the environment and for other social causes, and we want to expand it into other wearable items, such as shirts and pocket squares. And so that's where you stay tuned because you're gonna grow. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah we're on our way. So somewhere <laughs> along the line, you show these to uh, a local, a regional Emmys mm -hmm. in, in Denver. What happened 
there. So this was actually in Los Angeles. Oh, it was in Los Angeles. Yeah, it was. Um, and we saw, gosh, I don't know how many celebrities we met, but we gave away 500 bow ties at the Emmys, or four to 500 um, at the Emmys to celebrities in the local area. And our market in LA, like the interest in, in LA has just exploded since then. Yeah. Uh, so did you get some orders out of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it wasn't as instantaneous as I thought, you know, it was yeah. a lot of, you know, a month down the line, somebody's like, oh, I saw you guys at a gifting suite at the Emmys, you know, and that sort of thing. And so it's been so cool to watch that. Um, we had no idea that it was going to be kind of this seed that we were planting. We thought it was going to be like, Oh, we're going to sell out the next day. What did your professor say when you were invited to L.A.? Oh, my gosh. A lot of different mixed reactions, you know. Um, but everybody was so supportive in trying to figure out how I can still get my assignments in and how I can not attend class because I was gone for almost a week, you know. Um, and, and it's it, on your bill, right? They're not paying you to come out? Well, or actually, did they give you a stipend to come out there? Regis um, was a huge supporter. Regis University... I mean, I, we couldn't have done it without them. Yeah. Um, there's this new innovation center that popped up on campus. and they So were, important at schools. It is. It's so important. It's just sort of a place, a space for students to develop ideas. But the cool thing about Regis is, is that it's all social conscious, like socially conscious ideas. So not just business ideas that are going to be profitable, but business ideas that are going to be profitable in the social good realm. Um, so I think that's so important. What is your business model? Oh gosh, um, I mean that's such a that's a broad question. Is it based on Uber <laughs> at all? Did I read that somewhere? That a you... little bit, yeah. We have um, we have an interesting model where all of our seamstresses work from home, so we don't have the massive overhead because we wanted to take some of that some of that overhead cost and translate that into both cost savings for our consumers, but also we wanted to take that and put it into social good. So instead of having overhead, we did a model where our seamstresses can work from home because we work with marginalized populations. And you have five. Yep, right? and, okay. and not a lot of them can get around. And sure. if they can, um, it's great, it helps us out. But um, yeah, it's just, it's an awesome model where we, in some cases, give them a sewing machine um, if they can't afford one and we help them, you know, just make some extra money on the side kind of thing. Speaking of socially conscious, your company is giving back to yeah. three different areas. What, yeah. what are the three organizations? So our three organizations right now are Friends of the Haven, which is a drug addiction research treatment center for women exiting the prison system. A lot of them have children, um, so that's really important. Minds Matter, which is helping connect kids with um, college scholarships and education opportunities. And then um, our last one is the Blue Bench, which is helping fight sexual assault, um, which is so important and so prevalent in today's society. Is that taught in schools today that you build a business, but you need to give back? You know, I don't think, I know a lot of kids, you know, a lot of kids that go in or are in college right now, and I don't know anybody else who's received an education that does teach them that, but I have learned that at Regis. So, um, I mean, as you can tell, I'm just plugging, plugging, plugging because well, no, I love reading. Well, no, but good for you. Um, and, yeah. and out of high school, you did some time um, where, you, where you left the country and mm -hmm. you tried to educate kids. So this is yeah. part of your fabric. Definitely, yeah. Um, let's talk about the bow ties now. Okay. So here's, and we should say that you also sew. So yeah. you know exactly what your seamstresses are up against. I do, I do. Do you know, do you remember where these fabrics came from? Or what oh, they are, man. or do you have yeah. so many fabrics that it's hard to keep track of now? You know, it's funny. You kind of, you kind of develop a relationship with the. With I understand the fabric, that. You know, because yeah, um, I sew, I get that. Yeah, so I know this one used to be a T-shirt, which okay. was very loud. You know, it's a it's a loud T-shirt. Um, this is an upholstery fabric which was um, a really cool partnership down in Denver with a Denver design studio. Yeah. And um, these were pants before. Um, what else? This was a jacket, like a suit jacket kind of thing. Um, this was another upholstery fabric. Yeah, they're all just from different areas, which is so cool. How'd you come up with a name? Was it easy? RepurposeBowties.com? Yeah, .com? I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, Repurpose just kind of... I mean, my friend and I have been joking all this weekend because I look at stuff and I'm like, oh, that would be a cool end table, and it's like a spool for a cable line. And, you know, stuff like that where... It's just constantly in my mind on like how we can repurpose waste because so much stuff ends up in the trash when we could use it in other ways or use it further as what it's meant to be, you know, and it's just, it's crazy. You have an old soul, I think, <laughs> maybe. 
I, if I had a quarter for... <laughs> for How many people had told you yeah. that? No, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so you may branch out and take this company in many ways, yeah. um, but it sounds like you're always going to be socially responsible. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed that you, you have a little silver tray here, yeah. which is very vintage <laughs> and very cool. It is. The ties are also on repurposed wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where are you getting the wood, and whose idea was this to, you know, have it hang, which I think is ingenious. That oh, it just hangs yeah. Up. <laughs> just screw a little hook it, in there. Oh, and by the way, you name your ties, too. Yes, we do. All, all just funny, quirky names. We love the quirkiness of it because we think it represents the, the fabric's personality. Um, but I got this idea. I grew up, my dad owns a carpet company, and he um, had pallets in his warehouse. And so I was around pallets all the time. I think we had broken apart some pallets at some point. And so when I was trying to figure out a package, idea it was the first thing to my mind that I should call my dad and ask him um, to use some of the pallets from the warehouse because he I mean they just stack up and stack up and stack up and people um, companies are always looking for ways to put them to good use so um, so was somebody is somebody cutting these for you you know we actually did those by hand my uh, director of operations I'm not I, surprised I know right yeah we uh, um, went down to her house her dad had all the tools and everything and we broke apart pallets for an entire afternoon um, and made like 500 displays in one afternoon and it was it's hard work but that's like that's the cool story behind starting a business is that you I mean, you're just in the trenches, you know. I, I know how to sew these, I know how to make the, the displays, and um, there's just something so cool about being so in touch with your product. And these, when you buy one, you get mm -hmm. a piece of wood with with this, or do you have to request it? Yeah, it depends. Um, if you buy them from a retailer that we partner with, yeah. then um, the retailer can give the blocks of wood away, and um, it's a great way to store them in a... In a or keep it as a cool marketing way. Yeah, situation. exactly. Exactly. If, uh, so in five years, if I said, Paul, where's this company going to be? Now, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll be out of college then. Are you going to do an MBA, or are you going to just see what happens? You know, I don't know. I, um, it's always been a dream of mine to go to an Ivy League for... Um, a, We're some, right next to Yale. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fingers crossed. If anybody, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I've always wanted to go to go to an Ivy League, and I'm studying um, economics and neuroscience right now, which is a funny combination. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to continue doing this, of course. Like this is my passion, but um, education has always been at the top of my list. So it's the best. It is. I. I mean, you can do education for the right reasons, but I. I'm in it because I love learning. Like I love going to school every day, and I love just learning so many different things about different topics and um, it's great. So you should be applying to Yale in about a year. Yeah, maybe. Yep, yep. Yeah. Notice how I didn't even Six say Harvard, months. I just said Yale. <laughs> just Yale. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much for coming <laughs> Thank on. you for having me. You really betcha. And it's repurposebowties.com. Yep. That's the one. Paul Hunter, yeah. thanks. Thank you. <laughs>